welcome to Fiki Fast Forward. Uh, this is a program about technology, science, and innovation, and how it is going to make a, make a big impact in future for all of us. And for this session, I'm very delighted to have with me Himanshu Kapania, a dear friend, of course, a well-known uh, person in the industry. So Himanshu is the former managing director of Idea Cellular, is the vice chairman of Aditya Birla Fashion and Retail Limited, and non-executive director on board of telecom companies Vodafone Idea Limited India, as well as Cellcom Exiata uh, Malaysia. He also has the additional responsibility to supervise Birla White Cement uh, business of Aditya Birla Group. And from a Fiki angle, we are delighted to say that uh, Mr. Kapania is also the chairman of Fiki Council on Telecom, Electronics and Digital Economy, or the TED Council, as we call it. Uh, in addition, uh, uh, you know, Himanshu is an engineer by profession. And in fact, the first thing I was going to ask is, uh, I also have a unique pleasure of, uh, you know, being on the same uh, educational institute from where Himanshu graduated. So he's a few years senior to me in college. So Himanshu, I actually wanted to start right from there. So it's about now close to 35, 40 years uh, since you passed engineering and your first taste of technology happened. So in that period of time, I mean, if you have to step back and say, okay, we're going to talk about what technology will do for all of us in future, uh, what kind of an impact it will ha have, uh, you know, how is it impacted a common person which you all, you know, love to see. Uh, of course, you know, I would like to hear from you, uh, how's, how do you see that journey? What has changed over the years? What changes have happened? And uh, if you were to just shrink that into a time capsule and kind of walk us through how that happened, and that will set a very nice stage to see where we can go from here. So I would really ask you to share that experience with us. Uh, thank you, Sanjay Naik. I'm extremely delighted to be part of Fiki Fast Forward and um, extremely pleased that my friend and uh, co-industry uh, colleague is today uh, with me for a uh, very important conversation on uh, science and technology. So it's my firm belief as far as uh, technology is concerned, it has had a severe impact on uh, all of us, all the citizens of India, especially the economic growth of India. However, uh, it is not been seen in the same light as uh, other activities, for example, policies, regulations, and uh, the growth of in uh, industries not got to do, uh, do what uh, technology needs to, uh, deserves. And it is, uh, it is for this reason, I thought it may be a good idea to be able to simplify the role of technology in our lives. That's why your question over the last 40 years, how technology has had a impact on our country and on our fellow citizens becomes extremely relevant. If you go back to our college time when we were there, there was hardly any computing power available to us. And uh, we were more in the pre-industrial age. We were more in the command and control environment at that point of time. But post-liberalization of our economy, I think it not, uh, not only the policy changes and arrival of capital, but also significant technological changes around the globe has had impact on all of us. And I'm going to bring forth three or four uh, technology changes which have had significant impact uh, on the society and the way we live and work and even play today. Obviously, the closest to my heart remains mobile technology, and it is uh, uh, clearly in the period 90s and 2000 uh, connected India, which was, uh, 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 it was so difficult if you go back to the 1980s, the only way of communication for all of us was a postcard and we should reach back home uh, maybe over three or four days or an STD call that we will wait till 11 o'clock in the night to be able to make a call and probably spend one third or one fourth of our pocket money for an 11 o'clock night call over a three or four minutes at home. So it's from there, things have so dramatically changed how mobile has connected all of us and uh, not only uh, people of all of us from the urban, but also in the rural markets. But this is a well-known fact as far as voice telephone is concerned. Its second impact has been arrival of internet and internet has had a significant impact around the globe, but it, it is new as far as India is concerned. And this is where the arrival of 4G 
has had a a completely different uh, impact on the country uh, with 4G and making it uh, available to the masses certainly multiple sectors have undergone significant disruption so it's no more about communication it is about transformation that has started to happen and those transformation we can really talk about uh, in uh, in industries like uh, commerce which uh, all of us are very familiar as was e-commerce uh, it is making major strides it in the industry like travel in the industry as entertainment in the industry like delivery logistics uh, and uh, uh, so is on the taxi front uh, and, and multiple other industries uh, even our social media which has had a significant impact on our lives Uh, you see i i have held myself back on uh, primary industries like education uh, health okay those impacts uh, i believe will happen as we go forward because it's the next phase of technologies which are entering their impact will be even more severe but saying this this last 40 year journey from the time we were in college to where we are today uh, i would say that life has been far more simpler far more enriching and uh, technology has played a significant role in, in our lives now very well said uh, that uh, because there was a point in time where um, you know people used to be you know uh, uh, you know bamboozled by technology and buzzwords and stuff like that whereas today uh, even a kid you know in a high school or even forgets high school in a kindergarten is as comfortable or far more comfortable with computers and mobile phones then the the technologists who are leading this industry are today uh, even when they were in college so i think that's one change and second thing is i think from a societal point of view which you mentioned uh, technology clearly has made a massive uh, uh, upliftment in terms of uh, comfort in terms of earning potential uh, in terms of you know just how uh, you know we 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 basically live the life today so i think it's been very uh, an interesting to see from that angle in fact uh, coming back to uh, you know looking forward Uh, if you think about um, one of the thought processes uh, which is going on and i know you wrote a paper on behalf of fiki uh, where we said that uh, the digital uh, economy contribution to the india's 5 trillion dollar economy uh, uh, objective uh, will be at least a billion a uh, 1 trillion dollar which is about you know 20 to 25% of the uh, the national economy that we are talking going forward in fact if you look at countries like taiwan today Uh, probably 30 40% of their uh, you know economic wealth actually comes from uh, digital economy uh, if you look at china if you look at us uh, in fact china has taken the digital economy as a mechanism the electronics and the whole uh, you know mobile and the other industry to leapfrog from traditional systems so i wanted to actually use that as a you know canvas to say that as we look at things today i'm sure there are many many different technologies that are coming and emerging in the world uh, starting from communication 5g uh, robotics artificial intelligence blockchains industry 4.0 there's a whole bunch of stuff happening around so what would be very interesting is to actually take one by one each of these segments which we think will have a large societal impact which will contribute to this 1 trillion dollar uh, economic impact uh, for for our country and actually kind of see it from a different perspective uh, i think there are a lot of uh, wizards out there in the world who can give a lot of gyan about what exactly those technologies do and what the innovation is but what would be very interesting to understand is how does it impact a common man how does it impact our country what can we gain out of it what economic value add can we add uh, and basically how can we take this uh, experience of last 40 years and see all of this stuff coming together and put it all in a jigsaw puzzle and say if we can do the right play five years from today uh, india can proudly say that we used the new technology advent of the new technologies as well as the new uh, ecosystems which are emerging to our country's benefit so that's what i thought would be a very interesting way to look at things going forward so so where better to start than with communication sector and with 5g So let's talk about uh, 5G. There's a lot of hype around 5G. Some countries said I've already gone to it. Some countries are going into it. Clearly, 5G is going to be a very generational decision. It's not like 2G going to 3G going to 4G. It's it's as bigger, if not bigger, than wireline telephony going to wireless, right? 
it's like a once in a in a 10 20 year kind of a decision so when you look at 5g from that angle and then you look at it from saying okay what does 5g do for india so what what's your perspective you've been in the insider's view of everything in telecoms i would like to hear from that a point of view so uh, you raise uh, multiple of points uh, sanjay and uh, being from the telecom sector uh, this is closer to both our hearts as far as uh, how is it that we can take the telecom to the what we call telecom 3.0 we've already had 1.0 with the voice telephony uh, made a big impact now 2.0 with the uh, massive investment my understanding about 10 lakh crores was invested to uh, put a, a pan india 4g investment now the obvious question is is india ready for 5g and before i specifically answer about ready for 5g we have to uh, look around why the basic reason why we believe that india is ripe for digital as an economy our economy has been uh, uh, primarily uh, only uh, digital contribution at this point of time is 8% and you have referred to um, uh, currently taiwan which is doing 30% china is at a 35% level us is at 25 to 30% level so why is it that india in spite of the fact that today is uh, has over 600 million uh, customers who are using broadband services it's the uh, second largest in terms of uh, size of broadband users uh, as well as second la- uh, 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 largest around the world in uh, per data consumption uh, why is it the overall contribution of uh, of uh, digital is low and um, if you understand that as important parameter then this backbone of infrastructure digital infrastructure that we need where 5g is the technology chosen technology to provide this will become a lot more clearer so uh, so uh, my first belief is and when we sat down and wrote this paper in fiki that uh, currently we are 200 billion dollars in uh, in overall size just about 8% indian economy uh, and in spite of uh, multiple challenges that india economy is facing we've had a negative growth in the Uh, first quarter of this financial year significant negative growth there is general pessimism um, i believe and lot of us believe that it is this this phase will pass and digital will be the uh, uh, the ride on which our country will get back to its high single digit or most likely double digit growth and digital contribution will go up from the current levels of 8% to a level closer to 20% that's why we are discussing a out of the 5 trillion economy which is a primary vision about a trillion of the economy will come over the next 5 to 7 years from digital and for this there are going to be multiple of uh, technologies which are currently in lab or those technologies with the wealthy uh, uh, companies or uh, wealthy governments are using and from those technologies which have always been what we call deceptive phase is the term that i use move from a deceptive phase to democratization phase that means it moves away from uh, from the wealthy people to the masses and uh, uh, to my belief that that is exactly what happened to 4g and that is exactly what is going to happen to artificial intelligence sensors iot and all of that we will uh, get into more details as we speak along but those technologies are going to be harbinger for us to be able to take the economy to the next level because the adoption of that will dramatically change let me give an example of a smartphone all of you are familiar of a smartphone but this smartphone used to be a device only to make a call okay and then it became a device to become a modem and from that device as the convergence of technology started to take place okay it started to remove all single ended uh, devices whether it is a music player whether it is a calculator uh, whether it is a camera okay and many more uh, thoughts and many more of the devices were eliminated so the, the the power is not of a single technology the power is convergence of the technology so there is a first big component which is happening is convergence of multiple of technologies that you referred to second is the computing power on overall basis is going to be significantly higher and they will look at very technical terms but it is important to be able to understand the technical terms for implication of that so once 
uh, availability of convergence of technology will accelerate its adoption. Number two, the computing power will be of a completely different order, will allow these technologies to be adopted to a much larger scale that is there. And third is a second order impact. Second order impact is what I call people don't have time, capital is easily available, a lot more geniuses are uh, now available, and there are business models of new, new areas that were not available in the times that we were there. With these three or four important factors, it is clearly the demand for uh, bandwidth is going to be of a scale and size of a completely different nature. And the demand for bandwidth is going to be not only for by 1.3 billion Indians, okay, which is obviously one application of this, the demand for bandwidth will be equally high from the enterprise sites for, for beyond human beings by objects, internet of things, and once the sensors become part and parcel of us. As you know, you'll be surprised to know that this device today has 20 sensors. And on an average, India today has about few million such uh, sensors which are used and projection is in the next seven years, it will the number of IoT devices or sensors that will be used will be of an order of 10 to 15 billion. Each of the sensors use plethora of data. So from a current level of data capacity, which is currently, as I explained to you, that 4G was set up with a 10 lakh crores investment and our utilization currently is about 300 petabytes with adoption of latest technology, which will move in, as we democratize and more people will start using it, okay? And need for higher speeds, not only for, for the current 700 million people, for the next round of 600 million people who join the broadband bandwagon, but also the bigger, uh, the enterprises who will from currently move from a world where we are semi-automated to a completely digital world. Everything will, be, will turn to a digital world. So my projection is, that for current level of 250 petabytes, it will go up to 300 to 3,000 uh, 3, to 3,500 3, petabytes. So India needs 10 to, to 15 times more capacity over the next 10 to 15 years. So even natural, if this, this scale of capacity is required at prices or at cost, which is one tenth or one fifteenth, natural se selection is the next generation of uh, uh, technology needs to be adopted in the country. And the power of 5G is that it will help us to be able to take us from a current level of uh, peak utilization of uh, 250 to 300 petabytes a day to a 10 times level when we are able to deploy it on a nationwide basis. So that's where the role of 5G is going to be play. And it is, it is almost given that it's a matter of time that it will be deployed in country. But that is one part, is the capacity part, better speeds. All of us want uh, internet to be uh, used for not anymore for video, for, for uh, uh, SD devices and many more. But the larger component is what the Prime Minister has talked about, is fourth industrial revolution. And India is going to play an extremely important role in fourth industrial revolution. And 5G is going to be the bedrock foundation on which this fourth industrial revolution will make a very important uh, role to play. That is, that's why this interplay of demand and supply is where 5G will be at the corner store to be able to help this. And, and that will be, I can say, the, uh, the time where every sector in this economy will be disrupted because technology get adopted and 5G will help people to seamlessly adopt latest technology. Up to 4G, we were really talking of a network of human beings primarily. With 5G, we are talking of a network of Internet of Things, uh, sensors, and the number of devices which will onboard onto the Internet at a broader basis will be probably few orders of magnitude more than what it is. So it's very natural that uh, bandwidth projection to go 10x in the next 10 years. Himanshu, I think we can record this. But after five years, we'll see that every projection that has been made about bandwidth increase has always been negated. So you've actually had more bandwidth requirements sooner. So hopefully you will read 10x bandwidth much sooner and maybe 100x bandwidth in the near, near future as well. And the second point which you mentioned, I think is very important and interesting. 
is that 5G is going to touch many, many different industries. So 5G is more like a foundational infrastructure. So we talk about road, we talk of electricity. Uh, to me, uh, 5G is of the same category. It's a foundational infrastructure on top of which you will have all kinds of industries uh, play. Uh, you talked about the convergence. So you'll have, of course, the computing con uh, and, you know, uh, computing and communication and entertainment and education and commerce and everything is onboarding. The next set of things which is going to come on is, of course, from smart agriculture uh, to possibly smart transportation to smart factories. Uh, to you know, smart financial systems, to to whole bunch of other stuff which currently is uh, is not being onboarded on a on a digita digitization platform. If I were to use uh, what you said earlier, is what we uh, really see in in five G. So maybe what might be interesting to hear uh, is I want to get two thoughts from you. Uh, one thought uh, uh, is more on the user side of five G. What are the killer apps or the use cases of five G which we think you know, are going to happen sooner than later in India. So that's one question or one thought I want to get from you. The second thought I wanted to uh, hear from you, your ideas about, uh, and that's more in the context of the Atman Nirbhar Bharat, that, you know, 2G, 3G, 4G, we primarily, as a country, as a nation, we miss the bus in terms of creating our own ecosystem uh, from uh, of the industry to capture the entire value chain. So if you really see from a China and India, both the countries uh, started in around year 99, 2000, with around the same tele density. Both of us had around 2% tele densities, right? While after 20 years, both of us from a tele density and internet penetration have, I would say, comparable uh, numbers, of course. But one area where we got way, way behind is we never created a domestic ecosystem uh, versus China created Huawei ZT and others, probably a hundred, two hundred billion dollar industry directly. And probably you know three or four times that much behind those guys, the component, the manufacturing, the whole ecosystem. So let's talk of a five hundred billion dollar industry got created behind that. So the second thought I wanted to get is that how do we leverage the five G opportunity in a holistic way to not only create the economic impact on the front end of the infrastructure, which is the user cases and what those use cases will be, but also to take our strengths as a nation, the R and D, because R and D and technology is something that is India's strength. And really, especially with 5G being more software dominated, which is you know something which is India's sweet spot, to also take uh, that opportunity forward because there is time. It's not a battle that is getting over in the next one or two years. It's a stuff that will go for the next five to ten years. So how do we take advantage of that and become, to the extent possible, atmanirbhar in this uh, uh, communication infrastructure, which is a very important thing. So both of those two things, I uh, would like to get your perspective. No, uh, Sanjay, you are an expert, uh, being a manufacturer yourself, you understand all of this, but let me try to address uh, each of these questions uh, one by one. Use case. One of the, uh, let's start with the use case and uh, the powerful part of 5G, it is not just enhanced broadband services. I think the common man thinks that I, uh, it is just one, one more generation change, one more number change. And which means I will get much faster services, enhanced broadband. Definitely bandwidth is going to be an important component for use of uh, 5G, but it will be much more than this because there are going to be two important uh, features that come inbuilt into 5G. One is uh, uh, ultra reliable, low latency uh, feature, which will be part of 5G. And what does it mean? It's a very highly technical term, but what does it actually mean is that the uh, as an individual, if you if you're used to uh, waiting for your video or uh, services to come, uh, or okay, the speed there uh, will be of a completely different order because latencies will be of an instant level. Why is latency important? Not so much for you to see a um, HD video, uh, video or for video calling. Video uh, latency is extremely important for fourth industrial revolution. So let's take two or three uh, sectors and give an example of that. Let's start with transportation sector. I think it's almost inevitable that the current form of mobility, urban mobility that exists, will move to a connected car uh, mobility, where electronics will, be, will dominate automobile. And why would electronics dominate automobile? Because at this point of time, we want to make uh, the passenger 
life a lot more safer, car a lot more efficient, and operation much more uh, mm, uh, less traffic. So, so what this means in a connected car, the information flow at the car level will be of a completely different order. That means the traffic information uh, uh, will be completely connected, which will make you uh, uh, all cars will be speaking to each other, uh, and mm, uh, and the uh, will have full information, the full information of traffic lights information, road condition information, uh, and which will allow our uh, uh, being a, a pillion uh, uh, to uh, to the service will we'll enjoy our uh, driving much more pleasurable. But the second part is the whole era of entertainment which is a uh, will become part of a car so the urban mobility per se will go into a complete transformation with the arrival of connected cars and the one single example that we talk about is the flying car which is uh, uh, which may be seen more from a fantasy world but uh, is is likely to be a reality in the next 5 to 7 years because of the need for us uh, uh, we live in bombay uh, from going from from the suburbs to the uh, main city uh, in a rush hour, there would be a sufficient uh, shared taxi available, which would rather fly rather than be on the road. And that is easily possible with the arrival of technologies like AI and sensor supported very well with a 5G services. So you will be able to slice this with an ultra low latency at all points of time, you'll be connected and there'll be no reason to be disconnected. Let me give one more example of a remote surgery or health sector for it to be uh, become a reality. Okay, it would need at all point of time precision surgery, and for precision surgery, you need to be connected at all points of time. That's a, so. That's an application uh, on a healthcare side, and this application can go on and on. Uh, the other big thing is fourth industrial revolution uh, review uh, things about uh, a digital factory as a centerpiece uh, of all manufacturing activities away from our currently standalone factories. And a digital factory is intelligent, smarter, uh, and all throughout connected. And which will be far more efficient, far more productive, and will continuously get information, uh, 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 send information to its supplier, to its customer. The supply chain will be completely interconnected at all points of time. And for digital factory, to give you a sense of proportion, you'll be using as much as one petabyte of data, which is, as I told you, 350 petabytes is India capacity. If a single digital factory could be using of that, uh, that order of uh, magnitude for it to be continuously uh, digital. And think about it, um, millions of such factory in India, not only of the wealthier companies, but even for uh, a small scale sector to be able to move in. With, uh, those are the applications where 5G will make a transformational impact uh, on our economy, on our business, on the way we all of us uh, uh, do work. So I can keep talking about it. The power of 5G is the slicing. You can uh, continue to be able to network slice. So if you are, if a human being is using his services for his regular use, okay, it is not going to, the same uh, network will not be used for connecting your cars, and, uh, and at some point in time, you need to robots to be able to drive your car or flying your cars. And that is why allowing you two parallel networks to be running will be a, something which this natural feature comes in. So uh, it is our belief that all these features which are currently in lab stage, which we talk about in the developed countries, India may be a laggard country, but it finally just catches up. It has caught up with the world. Uh, when we launched 2G, we were about a decade behind the world. When we launched 3G, we were about six, seven years behind the world. In case of 4G, we were three to four years behind the world. And I believe in, in case of 5G, we'll be, at, we'll be within a two or three time, year time period when all these applications are coming in. So we, were, uh, we were discussing the uh, use cases of 5G and uh, the beauty of uh, the use cases of 5G as we talked about uh, to you about a ton, uh, connected cars, uh, remote-based surgery, and that these app, these are applications, and the power as far as India is concerned, that we are extremely strong in the application areas. That comes to be to the second part of your question, which is Atmanirbhar. Uh, we we have 
in the past uh, been uh, getting our technology transfer from 1G to 4G? Will 5G be a extension of what happened on 4G? Or will, will there be a change and there will be a lot more uh, localization and participation by uh, local uh, uh, manufacturers and enterprise for the growth on the 5G infrastructure? My fundamental belief is uh, as the use, as this is 5G is less about uh, digital infrastructure, more about use cases, uh, it is going to be significantly much higher participation. India's power, you are right that India has not caught up with China and US as far as manufacturing capabilities are concerned. But India has a soft power, the power of uh, IT services. And that is where 5G use cases and its applications has a correlation with the, the power of Indians as, as far as IT services there. Let me give you one simple example. The radio access network ran in an in a old environment, continued to be coupled together. The software and hardware is coupled together. We are arriving into a 5G world where hardware and software are going to be completely decoupled and no more proprietary networks needs to be used as far well as 5G is concerned. That is why one operator today has announced already that it is going to do its own 5G work. And I would not be surprised that more and more operators with the help of local uh, companies, uh, uh, whether it is uh, uh, whether it in the IT space, whether it's in the telecom space, whether it is startups will work together to bring these applications and use cases and combine together it will be no more an operator going alone. It will go along with a system integrator, with the application provider, uh, and then work uh, with a sector, whether it is manufacturing sector or uh, transportation sector or health sector, or education sector, entertainment sector. It will all work together to do that. So 5G will bring in a lot more localization. It is, and I think this fear about Chinese technology will be less and less to be worried about and more of us focus will move to how these applications can be built in, uh, uh, locally. End of the day, these applications will be India-specific applications, not a global-specific application. Yeah. Now, the good news again, as you said, is that um, with the disruption happening in the 5G in terms of ecosystem and the progress India has made in coming from the uh, side of the uh, people who actually do the core technology, I can say very uh, proudly that all the basic elements or what is required to build the core network of 5G is already available in the country. Uh, if you see from the optical transmission side to wireless example that you gave and the software and the application. So actually it's a very good case for us to say that we should really try to do as much of localization as we can do in 5G. A lot of operators as well as the ecosystems already in place. And I think with the right support of the government as well as the uh, industry participants, uh, this will definitely happen. So I'm very confident about that part. And, and as a result, the security will become second order because one side effect of uh, the, the, the deeper uh, penetration of uh, networking technology and digitization is that we are, in a sense, uh, exposed to a much larger level. Only now people are exposed. Now your power grids will be exposed. Your agriculture will get exposed. Your transportation will get exposed. So necessarily, I think the world is thinking over that security is important. And I think as an aspiring economy that will be a, a, a five trillion economy, it is crucial that uh, we take control of our own security because we, this security is not something that we can outsource. So I think your point about the ecosystem coming together and hopefully, as I said, the 5G will also be the new G when we become Atmanirbhar versus uh, just importing from outside. A couple of other thoughts I just wanted to um, uh, you know, ask you about is that there's a lot of uh, you know, thought process around the new technology coming in and displacing you know, jobs. So someone says, okay, artificial intelligence is going to come. You're going to do more automation or, or digitization of finance sector uh, or industries. So, so the jobs will go away. And clearly, one of the thought processes in the country, which we all need, is that we need actually more jobs. We need economic impact, but we need more jobs. So Imanshu, maybe you can just uh, share your thoughts about technology as a broad canvas. You know. Uh, how does it actually uh, uh, create more jobs and what has been the past experience and, and should people be worried or should we be actually happy that uh, things will actually move in the positive direction as far as job creation is concerned? Uh, Sanjay, uh, change is a constant. And uh, uh, in fact, uh, change is now accelerating. 
So um, with the arrival of exponential technologies, it is inevitable that change is going to happen. And some of the old uh, will naturally have to die. So there are certain category of jobs where, uh, which were manual by nature will not be required in the new world order. But I've read, a, uh, I've read multiple reports and one report that come closer to the, your question is a McKenzie report, which, which did a similar research when internet came in. And it uh, presented on a global scale on arrival of internet, if there was one job that was lost because of internet uh, actually replacing multiple industries. It has, uh, it has had impact on uh, uh, shopping industry, entertainment, taxi, travel, logistics, where all it has had impact. It has created 2.6 jobs against one job created. So uh, for every change that has happened, it is going to be the positive impact of the change will be three times the negative impact of the change. So first and foremost, to say that it is going to be status quo is uh, not to be true. There, there is bound to be, so people will require to be retrained, reskilled, and ready for the disruption going to happen. And it is not only about human beings, uh, every sector has to be prepared for the change. So let me lead the sector that I'm currently working closely with is the fashion sector, okay, beyond the telecom sector. And the fashion sector, the retail, is the most affected as of COVID is concerned. And people are getting ready for a huge, significant uh, uh, exponential uh, change in the fashion sector, moving in from physical retail to all of them as far as commerce is concerned. And moving on to commerce, uh, we are finding that we are short of people to be able to continue to be able to deliver. Why? Because A, with commerce arrival, it's not only about huge amount of data scientists that's required, huge amount of delivery uh, that is required. The, the connection earlier, it was few companies who were providing fashion. The number of small scale operators with the variety that is currently available on a small scale on commerce, uh, that has dramatically changed. So the e-commerce platform itself uh, is providing far more newer, uh, newer jobs and newer roles for a lot more uh, sets of that. And the same example, like we can pick up any sector, you'll find a similar examples. So this fear about job is not fear about loss of job, but a fear about, okay, am I ready for the change? Uh, okay, am I prepared to reskill myself, relearn myself and prepare ourselves for the new world tomorrow? Uh, we've all seen it over uh, different generations of technology evolution. And I think uh, the way to think of it is that uh, this whole COVID and the negativity that has got uh, created because of uh, the economic distress, uh, the healthcare, you know, panic, uh, as well as, you know, the entire uh, world order being changed because of the whole geopolitical realignment, etc. Uh, from what I hear from you is that all the new technology, the new innovation, the intervention of science and innovation is something that we should take it as a mechanism to leapfrog uh, the current challenges and really, uh, you know, propel ourselves fast forward uh, on the $5 trillion mission with a cutout of $1, bill, $1 trillion from digital impact. So that's, I think, a very uh, nice to hear, including the job aspects. Any closing comments in terms of uh, how, uh, you know, on a broader basis, uh, you see things moving forward? So first and foremost, I'd like to uh, thank Fiki uh, fast forward. Uh, the technology is the key for future. Okay, but it doesn't get its uh, importance that it deserves, number one. Number two, uh, technology is seen more as a, for few, uh, probably a scientist or an engineer uh, or somebody in the lab who has done work. In reality, technology is, doesn't reside there. It is not about wealthy, it's not about few, it is about the masses. The power of technology is simplification, it is about uh, making life much more simpler and, and much more. And that that is something that as a head of science and technology uh, mm, committee, uh, Sanjay, we both of us have to work together to make the role of technology uh, uh, impact on uh, human life uh, far more uh, pervasive and far more uh, known than it is at this point of time. Uh, 
uh, the big the next big is that there are a lot of technologies on the lab today this is what i call the disruptive phase it is like an artificial intelligence it's like robotics it's like uh, sensors it is like iot it's like blockchain all of this we read in a yellow paper we read about some of the uh, some of the startups having worked on this you will be surprised uh, while a lot of work has happening for decades most of them are now reaching a stage because of the power they are no more on a stand alone basis but on a converged basis for example uh, a stand alone uh, uh, virtual reality device was a useless device but when we were to take uh, a glass a wearable glass and put it with a sensor and a artificial intelligence built into it and converges together it power becomes multifold and it accelerates a big change so the the big part i am making that all these stand alone technologies are converging and working so uh, well together that you will find from what i call a deceptive that means it will have impact but we kept waiting for it it remains as a part of a fantasy world uh, shown in very uh, in the movies and shows to a reality which, which is very closer to this so these technologies will come much faster than we uh, all of us imagine and they will disrupt each and every economic sector and whether whether it is retail whether it is transportation and the, the something which is very dear to a heart governance it will disrupt with blockchain arriving education uh, will be will move to a completely different level we seen that on the on covid front but you will see much quality much better quality of education as far more affordable prices and available at home with ar and vr as the devices becomes a lot more uh, affordable healthcare which is a much significant priority will uh, will have will leap from going forward with these technologies so these technologies are a friends of our uh, of all of us and uh, it's going to help us make our lives uh, much more easier much more relaxed much more happier and much longer life for us so we should all adapt these technologies work uh, work with, uh, with them and uh, hopefully we should be here again uh, jointly going to government that we should allocate larger funds so that uh, we can localize lot more technologies and it should not be we have to go to labs uh, around the developed world but we can create lot more labs uh, in india the good part is part is these technologies are now completely open source and we have a open source technology it will be these applications will be done by the masses not by the classes anymore or by scientists as we may call democratize technology and india can play a global lead in taking these exciting technologies which are available in the world democratize them at india like cost which is now a well accepted world in the word in the world and actually bring it to the masses so that at the end of it everybody benefits there's a larger societal impact and india as a country can actually potentially take a leadership role in basically uh, you know mass market and mass adoption of these technologies at price points which are not heard in the world and this is really where a lot of innovation will be required this is where science and technology will play this is where we will need the support of policies government and of course along with the industry we all have to work together so that we can realize this potential that you very well articulated of getting to a trillion dollar uh, digital economy impact uh, when india reaches the 5 trillion economy so thank you again it's been a pleasure talking and uh, hopefully uh, you I'm know really delighted thank you so much it's been great talking here thank you again thank you thank you so much